As you're doing your defence application, you simultaneously or you know, in parallel have to do um, your UNSW application and that's basically just like applying for a normal civilian university, you go through those avenues um, and they have to be simultaneous at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you can't just pursue the defence process uh, and then expect to get a UNSW offer. Mm -hmm. You have to do, pursue that UNSW process as well. Yeah, so the dual application is very unique in the way that we do it. It's a normal university application pretty much, but you're also doing the defence side of things as well and like throughout year 11, year 12. So pretty much from your 16 years of age, you're able to put in the application the DFR, do the, the university process as well. When you get your ATAR, then the university will give you an offer if you're successful, and then DFR will also give you an offer. And with it being a dual process, I think that links back to how to prepare and just kind of be on top of your university side and make sure you're getting the grades and everything that you want to streamline that process to the specific degree. But you're also taking into consideration the military or fitness or anything like mm. that to just help your application go through. I think first and foremost, it's um, having the lifestyle of, yes, studying a UNSW degree, mm. so studying a, uh, an undergraduate degree, but also doing um, joint military educational training, so that's military training on top of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that balance is really amazing. Absolutely, and the military provides such a unique environment to make bonds that you just couldn't make at a normal university. We go through so many different challenges together that really binds us in a special way that you can't really find anywhere else. No day is the same, and I think that that's really special about ADFA. I think every day is different, has its different challenges. Monday mornings we do room inspections, so um, we live in um, a building with 40 or so um, other training officers, uh, and then we transition into um, approximately two hours in the morning of joint uh, military educational training. So that's more the military side of our education. Mm -hmm. um, we mentioned, you know, obviously UNSW degree and military. Mm -hmm. So that's that military aspect. And then from about 10 a.m. Uh, until um, five o'clock or six o'clock in the afternoon, that's just a, a normal civilian university style uh, day. So depending on the degree that you study depends on um, what classes you have, what lectures and what tutorials you have. Um, but that's solely uh, UNSW and university time. You'll progress onto your, your sport and VEX, so like the other clubs have been ADFA, okay. whether or not, it depends what night you have training on. For example, you might have footy training mm -hmm. on Tuesday and Thursday nights and soccer might be Monday and Wednesday. It really depends what sport and VEC you're doing. And across all three, three year levels, we'll all do PT and JMET, but the timings of that will change. Like as a second year, we'll do PT on a Tuesday morning, but if you're a third year, you might do PT on a Tuesday afternoon. Yep. But we're still doing it. But even though we're all three different services, it all happens at the same time. So we're not actually split, we're just having that tri-service environment. As I said, you go to Royal Australian Naval College, yep. uh, HMAS Creso, and you conduct the new entry officers course. And then post there, you'll go and do your specific role training. So for M uh, maritime warfare officers, you go to Watson for a little bit, and then you'll go to sea and can take all the stuff that you learn at Watson and put it into a practical sense, driving ships at sea. And then, yep, you'll come to ADFA. Army um, officers, they come to ADFA first. So we, we don't do nothing like the Navy where they do their naval training prior to coming to ADFA. Okay. So we just come straight to ADFA uh, and Mixed in with obviously the university degree, we do service specific training. Mm -hmm. So um, in your holidays between the you know, mid-semester breaks um, or even just semester breaks, um, you will go away uh, to Royal Military College Duntroon and conduct army training. Uh, and that consists of everything from uh, basic leadership, infantry minor tactics, um, uh, arms qualifications, so um, small arms and firearms, food and sleep deprivation training, high explosives um, qualifications, uh, navigation, mm -hmm. and that in sort of the, that broad spectrum. And then once we finish ADFA, so we spend the, the three years studying our degree, uh, then we transition to uh, Royal Military College Duntroon, and that's a whole nother year of just specific army training. And then the RAF is different again, so kind of like the army, we come to ADFA first, and then during our three years, we'll do our single service training, making it more Air Force oriented about learning about air power and capabilities and preparing us for the wider Air Force. Mm. And then upon graduation, we go into our own specific job training. So as a PCO, I will go and do my own training, which is completely different to the pilots or the logistics officers. So we very much go into our own stream.
So yeah, we get paid a wage <laughs> while we study. So um, of course, studying a UNSW degree, um, that's our primary job. Mm -hmm. uh, so our job here for the, our three years is to study that degree. But we get paid while we do it. There's no hex debt, there's no debt post ADFA. Yep. You're getting your, your salary, the free degree. Um, you do have a, what they call the initial minimum period of service. Mm -hmm. So you'll pay that back. Um, but yeah, pretty much just studying your degree and doing your joint military education training as well.